Hi and first of all thanks very much for all the subscriptions. I've now got over a thousand subscribers. Quite amazing. I didn't expect anywhere near that. Um, uh, I'm going to do a quick video here on sodium absorption. Uh, the inspiration for this is from a Royal Institute video which I'll put a link to at the bottom and I'll continue a little bit on to where that left off. So first of all this is a sodium lamp and the inner tube is the actual lamp itself. That part of it is the inner tube and the outer glass is just an evacuated envelope to keep the heat losses down to a minimum because sodium is, is normally a metal and we need it as a vapour for this lamp to work. It's very fitting, this lamp is now going obsolete in another year, LEDs have taken over uh, and yet it's been around for almost 90 years, uh, mostly used in street lighting. Okay, the light is up to operating temperature and I have a blow lamp here which is just on and I can take some table salt and put it into the flame. Notice how the flame looks black. So only when the sodium is in the, f the flame does it appear dark. Otherwise you can't actually see the flame under the sodium light itself. Well that's fine but I'm going to show you another couple of things with sodium lights but this time I'll use two lamps instead of one. Okay we've got two sodium lamps running here. I'm going to switch one of them out and look, observe the other one. Right, so if I take the lamp that's just gone out and then use that as a filter using the sodium that's now warm in the in full vapour in the, these arc tubes and if you see it takes it filters out quite a lot of the light from the sodium lamp still running interesting the camera is not catching it quite as well as the eye because you can see it really takes it right back to the neon discharge I think the camera must be struggling with the changes of colour but you can certainly see a difference you can also see that the, the tube appears to have a kind of cloudy look to it as well even though it's out it seems to be glowing this seems to be proof that the sodium is scintillating under the illumination from the other lamp it doesn't reduce the restrike voltage, so it's not like the photoelectric effect. Against the dark background, you can see this cloudy effect of scintillating sodium vapor quite clearly. Okay, I want to have a look at this lamp. This is known as a high pressure sodium lamp. Uh, it's actually Sodium and mercury uh, isn't monochromatic, uh, but it's known as a high pressure sodium lamp. I'm wanting to look at a particular example of this one, which is runs at a higher pressure. Now, this lamp is now at full brightness, and you see it's quite a whitish color. Uh, but when I switch the power off, if you watch the discharge tube, it looks distinctively dark. There's still a bit of glowing from the actual the heat of the actual tube, but now the now the temperature has dropped and the glowing has stopped. You see how dark looking that actually is. We're now getting absorption of the light that's being the white light that's actually shining on there and that bluish light is because all the colours are being absorbed by the high pressure gas in there. And as the pressure drops, that will slowly fade away. Oh, we found that quite interesting. Okay, and finally, as a way of a small bonus, this is the arc tube out of a high pressure sodium lamp. 
These are not made of glass. This is uh, aluminium oxide, but this one must have some other doping material because if I apply a high voltage to this, you can see the gas discharge inside, but that's got a strong UV content. But if I turn off the lamp, you'll notice it continues to glow. And that glow has got a very strong UV content itself. You can see the blue glow from the material the tube's made in. I've got a couple of fluorescing bits of material, that's LED, so the phosphors on the LED and there's some phosphors from a fluorescent tube there. And the paper itself also fluoresces. And if I turn the lights out, you should be able to see it better. So this is a phosphorescent effect, but it's partly in the UV spectrum.